Okay, in this episode, I want to show you how to get started with MongoDB via Docker and how we can talk to all of that with Node.js. So uh, somebody recently reached out and was asking about using MongoDB. And so this video is specifically for them, uh, but hopefully other people will find it useful on how to get Mongo up and running. Now you can install Mongo locally. It is cross platform and you have that option um, if you would like. However, I like to use it via Docker. And so uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. If you have never used Docker, I highly recommend you learn it. If you are uh, interested in being in the uh, programming community, Docker is um, a huge tool that's just only gaining more steam. And so it's definitely a good skill to have if you haven't. But if you've never used it before, that's not a problem. I'm going to be using some very basic Docker commands that, you know, I think you'll start to pick up as we use them over and over here. But uh, no previous Docker experience is required to follow along at home. And so um, let's take a look at how this works. So I've got a download folder here. And so let's just set the stage. There's nothing in it except an index.js file, which I will show you here in a minute. And what you're going to need to do before we do anything is you're going to need to install Docker. Now, um, this is not a hard thing to do. If you know how to use the internet, you can just search for Docker. Um, you just come here to www.docker.com and I don't know, we'll click on get started and then you can download. My, I'm on Linux, but you can download this for Mac, Linux or Windows. You install it and just follow the instructions for your platform to get it installed. So go ahead and pause the video. Do that if you don't already have Docker installed. If you do have Docker installed, you should be able to do Docker PS-A. This is my favorite command in Docker. It lets you see what's going on at any given moment. And if we hit enter there, um, if you just installed Docker, you will see uh, just this line, container ID, image command, created status ports and names, and it will be empty. Mine's not empty because I have some Docker containers that I uh, have used personally in the past, so you can ignore those. Um, if you have installed Docker before, you might have some other things under there and that's okay too. So once you have Docker installed, um, we need to do a little bit of setup to get Mongo going. So the cool thing about this is that um, you even though we're going to run Do uh, MongoDB in a Docker container, the data for your Mongo database can persist between runs. And so, um, again, if you've never used Docker before, think of it a little bit like a virtual machine, but not, not so heavy. It's kind of a simplified version of it. But we can run Mongo completely isolated. There's nothing installed on the local, you know, in your normal application space to, to run Mongo. It's all going to run completely in a virtualized um container environment, a Docker, what's called a Docker container. And so to keep our data between runs of that container, we need to create what's called a Docker volume. And so to do that, it's very simple. You just do Docker volume create, and then we're going to give it a name. And the name we're going to give it is Mongo data, because that's where we're going to store our Mongo data. And after doing that, it'll say, oh, I created Mongo data. And now I can do Docker volume LS, just like you would run LS in a, uh, Unix Linux environment, and you can see I have this new volume called Mongo data. Now, if you want to know a little bit about the guts of this, we can say Docker volume inspect Mongo data. And it's going to show that this is the point on your actual hard drive where it's storing that Mongo, uh, sorry, not Mongo, Docker nodes knows that that's where the volume subsides. So if you're ever curious of where your actual Mongo database data is, it's going to be right here. And then again, if you're running this on Mac or on Windows, you'll have a different path. You're not going to have a, a slash var slash lib on Windows. And so that has been created. And so now we're ready to actually run Mongo in a Docker container and watch how simple this is. Now, again, if you're not familiar with Docker, just kind of follow along with the commands. Um, you don't have to have a ton of knowledge here. So just copy the commands for now until you know what they're doing. But I'll try and explain it as we go. So we're going to say Docker run and we're going to give our container a name. And the name I'm going to give it is just MongoDB. And then what we need to do is we need to mount a volume into that container and I'm going to mount Mongo data, remember that's the volume that we just created, and I'm going to mount it into the container 
at the forward slash data forward slash db path. And so on the left there, right here, that is the name of the volume that we're going to mount in. We do the colon, and this is the path inside of the container where that volume is going to be mounted. Next, we're going to say dash D. That means run this as a daemon meaning it's not going to, it's going to return immediately and start it in the background. You can also run Docker containers with interactive um, uh, sessions, which we'll see in a minute. But for this, we're going to run it with a dash D. And then what we need to do is we need to expose a port. So we're going to do dash P. And now the default port for Mongo is 27017. And we're going to expose it as port 27017 so you give it two numbers there one is the port from the container and the other is how you would like to expose it onto your machine and a lot of times you'll just one-to-one -one map that so um, don't get too hung up on that for now if you're, if you're not sure what's going on there um, we'll see more about that in a minute and then the last thing you need to provide this command is an image and the image we're going to use is the official mongo image from Docker. Now, if you have never run this before on your machine, when you hit enter, it's going to download. Docker figures out, hey, I don't have that image. I'm going to download it for you. And it, it takes care of all that for you. Uh, in my case, I already have the Mongo image. And so it's going to skip that. So if you run this and it does a bunch of things that you don't see on my screen, that's because it's grabbing the image. That's a one-time hit the first time you need to pull an image from Docker. So this is the command to create our Docker container. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and I'm going to get this big long number and then it's going to return back to my prompt. Now, again, what's our favorite Docker command? Docker PS A. It's going to show us all the Docker processes uh, containers that are running. And now you can see I have this new using the Mongo image, this new container that was created 10 seconds ago. It's been up for nine seconds and it shows that I'm exposing port 27017. The name of this container is MongoDB. That's it. We are now running Mongo on our machine. Again, this is completely cross-platform. As long as you have Docker installed, you don't need to know any of the details of what it takes to install Mongo on your local system. It is now running and we can connect to it. Now we can connect to it a couple of ways, but let me show you how you can actually run the Mongo shell right from inside that container. Um, again, we're gonna do some Docker commands here, but don't let it freak you out. We're gonna do docker exec, which means we wanna execute a command. We're gonna say dash ti, which means we want this to be an interactive session. We wanna see the output from the container and we wanna be able to enter input via the command line into the container. And we need to give what container we wanna speak with. In this case, it's mongodb, not the image name, the container name. So this over here. So we wanna exec or execute a command inside the MongoDB uh, container. And what command do we want to execute? Well, we just want to run the Mongo shell. Now, Mongo is not installed on your local machine. If you try and type Mongo from your prompt, if you don't have Mongo installed, it's going to say unknown, you know, I don't know what that is, can't execute that program. But inside of that container, Mongo is installed and we can run any Mongo command. That includes things like exporting databases, importing databases, all the Mongo shell commands will work inside the container. So I'm gonna hit enter here and you'll see it's going to output, hey, I'm running the MongoDB shell version 4.2.0, even though it is not installed on my local machine. It is installed inside of this Docker container, which is really cool. And so once we're in, inside, we can run normal Mongo shell commands. And if you're new to Mongo, the, I, I will link documentation to the shell below so you can fiddle around with that. But you can do things like show DBs and it'll show you all the default databases that um, are present. And then uh, let's create our own DB. The way you do that in the shell is you say use, and we'll just call it my DB. And so it says switch to DB my DB. So now we have, we're in our database. And so we can do what's called a show collections. And we have none. We haven't created any collections. So let's go ahead and create a document. Let's do db.devices. Devices will be our collection name. And let's do insert one. Again, these are just regular Mongo shell commands. I'm going to say let's insert um, an object that has a device. And we'll say this is the DHT22 temperature sensor like that. I think I have all the syntax correct. And I'm going to hit enter and you'll see I'll get this message that says acknowledge true inserted ID 
And now if I do show collections, you'll see I've got devices. I have a devices collection now. If I do show DBs, you'll see now we have a MyDB database. And we can do things like db.devices.count. And you'll see we have one. Let's do a search, db.devices. Again, we're in the devices collection, dot find. And you can see that object that I just inserted is here in the database. So that's pretty cool. And remember, this is all persisting in that volume that we created just a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna type in exit here. That's gonna kick me out of the container. I'm now back at just a normal local prompt. Um, and again, if you're curious, docker ps-a, you can see that my Mongo instance is still up and running. And so that's cool. So now we need to interact with this with Node.js. We want to interact with the, the Mongo database that's running inside the container from just our local machine that has Node.js installed. So I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. We'll clear that. Uh, let's pull it down a little bit more. Okay, so this. All of this code that I'm showing right now came directly from the getting started from the MongoDB Node.js driver. I will link that in the description as well. There's nothing fancy here. I, it's all copy and paste with just a couple of modifications. So um, you can see we create a Mongo client which requires the MongoDB package. And so all we need to do is npm install uh, MongoDB. We'll save that. That's going to go ahead and install. So now if we list our directory, you can see I have a node modules folder that I didn't have before and a package lock JSON. Okay, great. So I've got the uh, NPM package that's required for this. And you can see it gives a connection URL. We're going to connect to local host. Now again, this only works because we exposed, we use that dash P on our docker run command we exposed port 27017 from inside of the container to outside so i can connect to the container from other processes on my machine the database name remember we called it mydb and then we create a new client using that url and then one thing that'll um is a little bit of a catch when you're first using the node.js um, driver for MongoDB is this if you're not familiar with Node.js and closures and things like that the connect is an asynchronous call so you're going to call client.connect and it's going to immediately return and it's going to use this callback function and so what people normally like to do if you're used to serial programming is you call connect and then you try and do things down below here in the file that's not going to work you need to enclose your logic inside and so this is very again straight out of the I'm getting started, but we're gonna do the connect, client.connect, and once it connects to our server, we're gonna log out this message, connected successfully to server, and then we set up our DB, which is just our DB name that we pointed out up here, again, my DB, and then the collection name is devices, and then we're gonna do a collection.find. This open close bracket just means we're not using any special search, we're not looking any special query we just return all items and then we call to array again all of this is in the node.js mongodb driver documentation which i will link below um, if this is all new to you and then there's a callback to that which will return an error if there's an error or the documents the mongo database documents that were returned and then we just log them out console.log found the following devices and then we log them and so let's run it, see what happens. If we just do node index.js, we hit enter. Uh, this deprecation warning is from the driver, so you can ignore that. It's just talking about um, feature dec um, deprecation. But right here you can see connected successfully to server and found the following devices. And you can see it's that's that DH20, DHT22 that we just inserted with the Mongo shell. And you can do the same thing. You can use the driver to insert documents, query for documents, update documents, anything that you can do uh, with that documentation. Uh, again, uh, the MongoDB Node.js driver, we can do now and it will connect to our local Docker Mongo database. And so let me clear this really quick. Docker PS-A, it's your best friend. 
this is up. Now, this is not like a Windows service. And this is one of the, the things that if you're running Windows, you might choose to install Docker, or not Docker, I'm sorry, Mongo locally as a service so that it will start up every time you reboot your machine. This is not going to survive reboots. When you reboot, um, this is gonna be in an exited state. And so if you come back in to do your development work and you can't connect to Mongo, it's likely because your container has exited. And to simulate that, I will, we can run docker container stop mongodb. So we're going to stop our mongodb container, docker ps-a. And now you can see its status is also exited, which means it is not currently running. So now if we try to run node index.js, we are going to get an error. And the error is going to say, hey, I can't connect to a local host 27017 because nothing is currently running it. There's no MongoDB instance running um, on that port. And so the easy way to fix that, if you've rebooted and you find that you can't connect, is just to do a Docker. Before I show you that, let me just point out the, the container stays, even though it's exited, it'll stay here so you can start it right back up. And so to do that, we just say Docker container start mongodb just start that container back up for me so i'm going to do that docker ps-a and now you can see it is back in the up state the port's exposed so if we one more time run node index.js and hit enter you'll see we're back to returning um, records from the database and so that is a very brief way to get up and running with MongoDB via Docker and then integrating with Node.js. You can get up into a development um, position very quickly to where you're talking to a Mongo database, inserting records, updating them, deleting them, and things like that. And so uh, that's going to do it for today's uh, episode. If you will look at the top right corner of your screen and you've made it this far and you found this video useful, I would love to chat with you, hear from you, hear what kind of projects you're working on, help you out if I can. Um, to help you get unstuck in your projects, you can join my Discord server. There's an invite link at the top corner there. I uh, just type that into your browser. It'll invite you in and you can, you can find me there if you wanna reach out and chat. I'd love to hear from people and uh, help people if I'm able to. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful and I hope you have a great day.